Hello guys, and welcome back to another cold episode. On today's episode, we are talking about the new card usage rates, as well as another big update for Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel, and we're just going to go over these real quick. Uh, starting off with the official usage rate stats, uh, which have been updated, and uh, we're going to go through these real quick, and uh, just take a look at them. Uh, obviously, Maxi and Ash Blossom at the top percentages. I'm not even going to remark on any of these, uh, because honestly, these change very very little and uh it, i i you know i don't really know why they just do um same same thing with called by called by honestly i'm surprised has not gone all the way up to 80 percent usage rate this is i i will comment on the fact that it's still disgusting that there are almost three cards that are consistently in 80 percent of decks that's unhealthy uh, for any game. SP Little Knight's almost up there as well, which is crazy. To be fair, it's a new card. I do expect it to... Actually, no. SP Little Knight is such an insanely good card. It, yeah, realistically is going to be there. Uh, Imperm going down in usage rates. Not really saying much. Uh, Nibiru going down. Crossout Designator going down as well. But, uh, all in all, still high percentage rates. Uh, next up we have IP Mask Arena, which is actually going down, uh... This is kind of weird. I don't know what decks are necessarily taking out IP Mascarena for instead something else. So there's that. I I don't know. Maybe just the you know less decks are using um, not using, but uh, less decks are playing uh, or less Snake Eye decks, which means less decks are just inherently playing IP Mascarena. Speaking of which, Baron has gone up quite drastically. I don't know what this is from. Could not tell you. Uh, notably, these are also from the, um, uh, as of June 29th for the May 20th, uh, update around that time. So it, I, I believe it was before the Duelist Cup or the, the WCQ. So these are all, uh, before or, or for, yeah, so it was before and then during the Duelist Cup. So there you go. Hopefully that made sense. It probably didn't. Uh, anyway, next up, Effect Veiler has gone down in usage rate. Um, Effect Veiler and Imperm going down do make sense, given the fact that targeting effect negation is not nearly as useful now because of Kieran being able to dodge out, uh, as well as just more decks coming into the format and being uh, just as good. Triple Tack also going down, not really too much, though. Uh, Zeus going up is kind of interesting, but I guess it makes sense. No, it doesn't. I, I don't know why Zeus is going up. I don't know. It's Zeus. Why not? Um, Underworld Goddess. Underworld Goddess being played in 30% of decks is wild. I don't know why. I don't know what deck is, is making use of this card. I don't know what decks are making use of this card. I don't know why this card is being played. I genuinely don't. It's kind of weird. Um, if Pearly... I, I guess maybe for Pearly. But like Pearly's not that common. I only saw like two of them. Like, unless you are one of the top players in the game, you I, you don't really need this card. I Anyway. Um, uh, we, we have a whole bunch of other cards here as well. Uh, Promethean Princess notably went down quite significantly. Uh, King Sark went down. The uh, Obviously, he, uh, Imseti also went down. Hita went down. Axis Code Talker went down. Uh, Apollosa went down. All of these things that are... Uh, that were statistically used mostly in Snake Eye has all gone down, uh, as well as all of the horror stuff has gone down just because they're not as new, so people are realizing that they're not actually all that good uh, in most strategies, so they're just cutting them. Uh, Fenris is going up. Other than that, I think everything else... Oh, sorry. Happy actually went up. What? Oh, you know what? I, I, I know why Happy went up. Uh, it's because people actually finally got that card. They were originally not playing that card because they didn't have it, so they would play probably the SR, and then now they actually have that card, so now they're playing it. That's what I imagine is happening. Because uh, there's no other reason as to why Happy has that much usage rate. Um, so there's that. Uh, but then, obviously, Gamma and Driver also are uh, pretty high up there. <sighs> anyway. <clears throat> we have a... a uh, some new win rates as well. Uh, Hot Red Dragon, Archfiend, King Calamity. 
is uh, the highest win rate card, which is currently banned now. Uh, or not currently, but is going to be banned. It's now on the ban list. Uh, so there's that. Which is kind of funny. Cosmic Blazar Dragon. What what deck is summoning this? Uh, Charles still has the actual real highest win rate. Because these two cards... Um, I, I, I don't know in what world these are ever being summoned, realistically. But uh, alas, there you go. Uh, as far as Emperor Charles, this one definitely seems like something that you would actually see realistically in a deck. Uh, so there you go. These are the actual two cards that I would look at and be like, hey, those are part of a deck that you could realistically see and are actually winning. Uh, Trish? I don't know who's summoning Trish, but apparently it has an insane win rate. Uh, but it went, it went up a win rate by, by 0.1%. Who is playing this card? And she, okay, whatever. Uh, Dark Fluid, if it hits the field, wins the game. Same with Roland. Same with Catapult Turtle. This was, um, this is why Catapult Turtle is banned. Catapult Turtle is able to, uh, facilitate FTKs with the new Tachyon and Galaxy stuff. So there's that. Um... Uh, and then we have some... In Alter... Oh, yeah. Prime Banshee. You know, the card that, like, does stuff in theory. Uh, and then Hot Red... Hot Red Dragon Archfiend Bane. Which, if this hits the field, generally wins the game. Oh, okay. So, the reason for this... I've, I've beat this card. That's why I was, like, su super confused. I was like, wait, why are people struggling? Uh, normally, if this hits the field, they've gone through their entire combo and uh, basically gets to uh, punch you and then make a whole bunch of other guys. Um, so generally, this just kind of wins them the game on the spot. So that's why. Uh, it's it's just part of that like big combo nonsense. Here are some, uh, some attack damages. Average battle damage. Numeron Dragon is doing lots of damage. Arc Rebellion doing lots as well. Uh, nothing else really of note. And then... Uh, ooh, sorry. We have finisher ranks, which Imseti is now number one finisher in the game, which is very funny. Followed closely, probably closely, uh, followed by uh, Raging Phoenix and then Promethean Princess, um, which is probably honestly why Imseti is at number one, because these two are taking up the next two slots, uh, and they're basically taking stuff away from the others. Uh, whereas Dua is number four. So there's that. We have the Dark Fluid. We have uh, Flomberg. We have Axis Code Talker, Baron, Happy, and uh, Kep 7 uf So there you go. All of the Horus cards are on here because uh, people really, really liked Horus when it came out. <laughs> so there you go. But more importantly than the card's usage rates is a new rating duels system as well as a... I, be I believe there's a new rank. Um, but at the very least... There is a new update to Ranked. Uh, I've just seen this. I have no idea what it actually is. So we're going to go over this together. Uh, new feature, Rating Duels. Enter Rating Duels, a battleground reserved for the best of the best. The pride and souls of duelists will be at stake. Ooh, interesting. Uh, this mode is a clash between duelists who have reached Tier 1 of the highest rank in Master Duel. Or in, uh, in Ranked Duels. The aim is to increase your rating. Okay, so this is just a Ranked system. This is just a normal-ass rank system that we're finally getting in Master Duel. That's it. It's just now you can actually be ranked properly and not just, hey, you made it to Master 1, and that's it. And then and now you're done. Okay. Yeah, that's basically what I expected. Um, this mode is a class between duelist and the highest rank. The aim is to increase your rating. Rating duels are held and ended consecutively with ranked duel seasons. Uh, there will be a ranking of the top 10 players in each season, and then aim to see uh, to see off your rivals and secure one of the top ranks. Um, okay. Uh, what are they? Players who reach tier one of the highest rank in the current season are able to play... Sorry. Reach tier one of the highest rank. Okay, so it's just... Right now, it's just master tier, right? So if you reach master one, uh, you, you now can compete. I don't know why that's so difficult for me to understand, but 
I think it's just the way that it's phrased. Um, in which meaning increases your rating. Uh, how high a player's rating is indicates their ability as a duelist. Uh, this means that even after reaching the highest rank in Tier 1, there are yet more heights for players to aim for. Ugh. Uh, players who are eligible to play rating duels can still play ranked, ranked duels as usual. Oh, wait, hold on. This is an entirely separate mode. I'm going to load this up in, in Master Duel and we'll, we'll give it a look. Uh, playing a ranked duel will not alter your rating. There's no rewards for rating duels. There is a new tile, title via missions. Okay, there are no rewards. So, what the fuck is the point? Here's the thing. Why? This does not incentivize me to play the game in any capacity. This doesn't make me want to play the game. This doesn't make me want to do anything. This just is... It, 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 sure, whatever. Okay, yeah. Um, changes in rating. Uh, 1500 is the starting rating when a player enters ra uh, rating duels for the first time in the season. Rating goes up when you win and down when you lose. The difference between your rating and the opponent's determines the amount that it will increase when you win and decrease when you lose. Winning will not increase your rating when it is f far higher than your opponent's. Winning will not increase your rating when it is far higher than your opponent's. That doesn't tell me anything, but okay. Uh, you will be matched with players with a similar rating if no match is made after a certain time... Sorry. If no match is made after a period of time, the search will gradually expand with a wider, wider rating differential. Okay, so this entirely relies on if people are willing to play this or not. Um, which, hey, maybe they will. Duration and rating duels and rating resets. Uh, ratings are temporary and will be reset with when a new season starts. So, okay, um, after ranking down at the start of the new season, you cannot participate in rating duels unless you reach tier one of the highest rank. Okay. Rankings. The rankings will be updated periodically. Due to this, the value shown for rating and top may differ from those on other screens, such as menus and uh, matching screens. If multiple players have the same ranking, one of them will appear in the rankings. Interesting. Game finally playable once you re reach Master 1. True. True. Uh, yeah, one of the my, one of my biggest gripes with Master One was the fact that once you got there, there was even if you were to play the game, it was so unbelievably bad because every game was just players immediately surrendering or playing absolute garbage, and there was never anyone playing anything interesting. It was always terrible. Uh, I I don't think I can genuinely say that I had a good game with. Uh, at Master 1. So, there's that. Um, okay, I'm going to hop into Master Duel and see what's actually going on with these and uh, give you a little bit more information. Okay, I just loaded up the game and uh, it doesn't tell me anything else. There's, there, there's nothing here for me to, like, specifically find. It just says, uh, rankings, yes, to be calculated. So... There's that. Granted, it's a brand new season, so it, if someone got there in like an hour that'd be surprising uh if someone got to master one i should say in fact there would have to have been multiple people who did that which i genuinely do not think is physically possible i think you cannot play that many games in that amount of time so there you go um but alas there's no real information here it just it just tells me the same thing that we read on the on the website so um I, as far as i can tell it's just uh, another ranked, I guess, that you can do once you get to Master 1, which is nice, but, like, I, I don't know, it, you know, maybe, maybe in the future there will be a reward, like, maybe if you get rank 1, you get an invite to a, an event... But as of right now, now there's no incentive at all to even play rating duels. 
Um, which I, I, I know the incentive is like, oh, not the incentive. The, the reason to play is like, oh, you're actually playing against good players now. Or maybe not even just good players, but like you're actually playing and, and like fighting for something. You're fighting for your ranking. But there's not really like anything in particular that you get out of it. There's no reason to fight for that rating. Like once you get to Master 1, you could just play more duels in Master 1. Like there, once you get there, there's no real reason to go into the rating system anyway because... Yeah, there's there there isn't any reason, you know. Maybe in the future there will be, and you know that'll be worth it. But as of right now, it's like, I I mean, you could get to the highest rank, and then and then you, you could get to the highest rank, and that's it. Because at, at the very least, like, if if we compare this to something else that has a ranking system, where you can actually determine who is the number one, uh, the the only thing I know of that, like, I have uh, awareness of, I should say, is League of Legends that does nothing as well. Like, if you make it to Challenger, which is Master Tier for us, the highest rank, right? If you make it to that, to that echelon, you get the same rewards as if, you know, as if you got first. So it's like, there's no real incentive at this point to, to, to do this whole rating thing. Um, so there's that, you know? However, I, at least in League of Legends, you can, like, potentially be put on, like, a, a team, you know, and, and play professionally because people recognize that you're a good player. So if you have a high rating, maybe people will be more likely to pick you up and stuff like that. Uh, but this is Yu-Gi-Oh! And no one's going to do that. So I don't know if people are going to be incentivized to play this rating duels. Um... Maybe, maybe in the future. As of right now, I don't know. This doesn't seem too incentivizing. Um, I, I, I guarantee that the wait times will be... Maybe not significantly longer, because, it, I mean, what, it's like 20 seconds right now at max? So, you know, maybe it's 40 seconds. Heaven forbid. But, uh, I yeah, that's all that I have to say. Um, it's, it's nice, at the very least. Now there's something to do when you get to Master 1. So, there's that. Anyway, that's going to be it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope that you guys did enjoy it. And if you did, I like it very much. I appreciate it. And remember to always stay frosty. Bye-bye. Shout out to the Frost Guard, my members. Thank you guys so much for the support. And I hope you enjoy the content.